All right, everybody, welcome to another Chem Complete video. And what I want to do in this lecture is talk about how to create ionic compounds from ions. So if you did not see the lecture that I released a day or two ago, it dealt with looking at charges and how to predict the charges for various elements based on their location in the periodic table. So you're going to need that background knowledge in order to complete this lesson or have this lesson make sense. So if you're not familiar with that, I would encourage you to go back into the prior lecture and I can link it down in the description that talks about using the periodic table to predict the various ionic charges or what we call oxidation numbers for the given elements. And once you're comfortable with that, then you start making ionic compounds from those various elements or ions that come together. So in order to create ionic compounds, we really want to understand what an ionic compound is or what ionic bonding is. And so when we deal with ionic bonding, we are going to be combining a metal with a nonmetal. And this will result in an ionic relationship as far as the bonding is concerned. So there are metal-metal bonds and there are non-metal non-metal bonds. The non-metal with non-metal is called covalent bonding and then metal with metal is called metallic bonding. So we're looking at ionic bonding, one of the three major types, and this is for a metal and a non-metal coming together. So when we do this, we're going to want to know what the various charge is on the metal and the non-metal. And when we know that, we can put them together in a ratio to give us the correct ionic compound. So let me give you an example. If you have sodium and you have chlorine. So sodium is a metal and chlorine is a non-metal, if you look at them on the periodic table. And if you go back and you understand what we were talking about in the previous lecture, sodium would have a charge of 1 plus and chlorine would have a charge of 1 minus. And so if you put them together, you would end up needing one apiece. So I would need one sodium at one plus and one chlorine at one minus because sodium chloride is going to be a neutral compound. We always want to set this equal to zero and figure out how many of each we need to make that mathematical relationship true, meaning that the net sum of all the charges involved is going to be zero. So it turns out that I need one sodium and one chlorine in order to create sodium chloride, which is table salt. Now, what happens if it's calcium and chlorine? Well, chlorine still has a one minus charge, but calcium is going to have a two plus charge. And as a result, if I take a look at this, two plus and one minus, setting it equal to zero, this is now going to come out to a net positive of plus one. And that's not going to work because we need a neutral compound. So what you do here is you say, okay, if I have two plus per calcium and one minus per chlorine, you bump up whatever has a one as the charge until you meet the requirement to neutralize it. So if this is two plus and this is one minus, you need this to be two minus. And you can do that by using a times two multiplier on the chlorine. So two times one minus would be two minus overall. And then that means that this would be zero. So what do I need? I need calcium chloride as CaCl2. Now where does this two come from? It comes from the fact that I need two chlorines in order to mix with one calcium. And that will give me the neutral compound with a charge of zero. Okay, so that's where that comes from. So we could continue in this fashion and we could say let's use another metal such as aluminum. Aluminum is going to have a typical charge of 3 plus and if I stick to chlorine chlorine is going to have a charge of 1 minus and so when I put this together I'm going to have 3 plus and I'm going to have 1 minus I need this to be 3 minus in order for it to match what we're talking about here and create a net of 0 so 3 at 1 minus a piece and then that is going to end up giving us 3 minus so 3 plus and 3 minus will equal 0, and that's good to go. So what that tells me is I need a total of 1 aluminum and 3 chlorines at 1 minus a piece. So it is AlCl3. All right. Now, 
there's a shortcut method to this and it works most of the time. You have to be careful if you have the same charge and it's a number greater than one. So like two plus and two minus, three plus and three minus, because in that case you only need one of each and this could mislead you. Uh, but if you know to reduce it by a common factor, then you should be okay. All right, and so the trick here is that you can drag and drop your charge values for the numbers. So in other words, take a look here. One goes to the chlorine. I drag and drop that to the chlorine. One goes to the sodium. I drag and drop that to the sodium. So I have one and one, and that's exactly what I see here. One sodium and one chlorine. Then I come to the calcium, and I say, all right, I've got two. I'll drag and drop that to the chlorine, so I'll need two chlorines. And one, I'll drag and drop that to the calcium. Okay, and so I need two chlorines and one calcium. And that's what I have, CaCl2. Do it again here. Take the three, drag and drop that to the chlorine, and then take the one and give that to the aluminum. So it means I need one aluminum and three chlorines. So it's AlCl3. Now note that that's just the number that we're dragging and dropping. You don't bring the plus down here. So you would not write AlCl3 plus. That doesn't belong there. We're just talking about the actual number of each individual element I need in order to create the neutral compound or the ionic salt. Okay, so that's an example there. So what I'm gonna do then is I'm going to clear the board here and I'm gonna put up a couple of different elements, some metals and some non-metals. And your goal is going to be to number one, predict all the charges, and then number two, I want you to figure out all the possible combinations of metals and non-metals and the ionic compound that they would give in that case. So give me a minute to clear the board off here and I'll be right back and I'll have those elements up that I want you to work with. Okay, so what I have listed here is a total of six elements, some metals, some non-metals. Your first goal is to go through and figure out the charges on each of these. So once you've accomplished that, go ahead and pause the video, do that, and unpause it once you're done, and double check before moving on. So go ahead and figure out those charges. All right, hopefully you had a minute there to work on that. So the correct charges here would be one plus, or just plus if you're writing it that way, for the potassium. It would be three plus for the gallium. It would be two plus for the barium. It would be two minus for the oxygen. It would be one minus for the bromine, and it would be three minus for the nitrogen. So what you wanna do at this point is take the various combinations here, and I set it up this way on purpose. Here are your metals in this row, and here are your non-metals in this row, right? So what we should do is we should take metals and non-metals and come up with all the possible combinations. So if you do this properly, you should get a total of nine possible outcomes of metals and non-metals. See if you can figure as many of these out as possible. Pause the video, work through it, unpause it, and then we'll go through them together. So good luck with that. All right, so hopefully you had a chance at this point to work through this. We wanna take a look at this together now and understand all of the possible combinations. Okay, so when we get ready to do this here, let's just start with the first metal we find and pair it with all the non-metals. So I'm gonna start with potassium. Potassium paired with oxygen. So it's gonna be one plus and oxygen two minus. Again, you could mathematically balance this or you could do the drag and drop method, whatever you find to be more convenient. So oxygen is gonna be two minus, potassium is gonna be one plus, so I need two potassium to balance out the oxygen or drop the two down here and the one down to oxygen. And what I should get is K2O. Then I have gallium and oxygen. So gallium oxide would have Ga3 plus and O2 minus. And so what I would need here is a least common multiple of six. So I'll need two of the galliums to get six plus and I'll need three of the oxygens to get six minus, and then that would neutralize. Or two, drag and drop to the gallium, three, drag and drop to the oxygen. So what I end up with is Ga2O3. Now I do it for the barium. So the barium 
is going to be 2 plus, and I just realized I'm doing this in order with the oxygen when I said I was going to do it with the potassium, so excuse me for that. Okay, uh, and then we've got O to minus, and so this is one apiece. So this is where I was saying you have to be careful because if you drag and drop, it should not be Ba2O2, it should just be BaO. And that's because you already have one of each and they cancel one another out from a charge standpoint. So it would just be BaO, right? So those are three. Now I guess we're doing it by the nonmetals because of my slip up there. So we're done with the oxygen. Let's pair all of these with the bromine. So we're going to go ahead and move down just a little bit. Okay. Potassium with bromine. Well, potassium is plus one and bromine is minus one. So that's going to be one apiece. So we would just end up with K, that's a horrible potassium, KBr. Okay, and then we do it with gallium. So gallium three plus, and we would have Br uh, one minus. And so here, you've got three of the bromines and one of the gallium in order to uh, correctly stabilize that. So it would be GABR3. And then we have the barium with the bromine. So we've got barium two plus and bromine one minus. I'm going to need two bromines in order to balance out the barium. And so in order to do that, I'm going to have BABR2, right? So then we keep moving on. The last set's going to be potassium, gallium, and barium with nitrogen. So let's go ahead and do that. So now we've got potassium 1 plus and nitrogen 3 minus. And so I'll need three potassiums for every one nitrogen. So it'd be K3N. And for the next one, it's going to be gallium and nitrogen. Gallium is 3 plus, nitrogen is 3 minus. So they already cancel one another out in a one-to-one -one ratio. So it would be GAN. And then finally, you're going to have barium 2 plus and nitrogen 3 minus. And this is a common multiple again because we have 2 and 3. So it's going to be 6 and it would be three of the bariums to get six plus and two of the nitrogens to get six minus. So BA3N2. And those would be the nine. So going back through them, it would be K2O, GA2O3, BAO, KBR, GABR3, BABR2, K3N, GAN, and BA3N2. So hopefully this video helped tie some of this together and how you take ions that are charged from the periodic table and bring those ionic elements together in order to create ionic compounds. And you need to match your metals with your nonmetals, get the correct ratio right, and that's the result. Okay, so that's going to be it for this lesson. Again, this is paired with learning how to do the charges from the periodic table. So if you did not watch that lecture, you don't understand where I'm getting these numbers, one plus, three minus, et cetera, go back to that lecture and make sure you are confident with that before you attempt to do this lecture right here. And again, link will be in the description if you need it. Okay, that's gonna be it for right now. I'll try to release another video soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.